bad gut function can cause bad brain function, memory loss, hormonal imbalance, thyroid condition, fatigue, feeling tired all the time, feeling fatigued after a meal. And I will explain to you why you feel the way you feel. You need to understand good health starts from your gut. Bad health is as a result of bad gut function. You need to get educated and not medicated for the rest of your life to change your life. If you find that you have a lot of issues with your gut, you better listen to this video. If you want to find the real reason why you're having acid reflux, heartburn, feeling bloated, constipated, or other gut issues, you better listen to what I'm about to say. If you're taking antacids every day, if you feel constipated all the time, you need to pause this video, grab a pen and a piece of paper. Hi, my name is Jeanette, and um, I've been having ongoing problems for a very long time. A lot of it was indigestion, um, heartburn, um, acid reflux, constipation, problems going to the bathroom. I was practically living off of Pepsid AC and, and acid pills. I was popping them at least three or four times a day like candy, as well as taking stool softeners. And um, ever since I've been taking the, the vitamins that Dr. Moss has given me, I can tell you right now that I have not taken any and acid pills, any heartburn medication, any stool softeners. I've been going to the bathroom regularly no abdominal pains, no bloating, um, and it just feels great not to be able to have to take these things over and over again and all the money that I spent in all these pharmacies, you know, popping these things like candy, it was just horrible, and, and I have to say that I, my sleep has gotten much better, and headaches have practically gone away. I used to suffer from migraines and was on prescription medication, and I can honestly say that I'm not on prescription any medication anymore for the migraines and I actually even stopped taking Excedrin which was something else I was always taking all the time for my headaches and I, I can say it's been about three weeks now since I've taken Excedrin and yeah, I just feel really great and I just want to thank Medwell Center for helping me. To orient you with how your gut functions, I want you to understand in your upper GI system you have your stomach our pancreas, our liver, and gallbladder. These organs are pH dependent. The pH level is how acidic or how alkaline something is. It is measured of acid or alkaline. The pH level of your stomach is supposed to be from one to three. The lower the pH, the more acidic it is. The stomach is supposed to be acidic. If you stuck your finger into your stomach, the acidity of your stomach should melt your finger to the bone. That is how acidic it should be. There are two main reasons. Our stomach lining is dependent to produce hydrochloric acid. Reason number one is for digestive purposes. The stomach needs acid to break down the food, to break down the proteins. If there is not enough acid, you will not digest your primary source of energy, which is protein. This is why even when you try to eat healthy, you still feel horrible. Sounds familiar? Reason number two. The job of hydrochloric acid is also to disinfect the food. There are parasite, fungus, yeast, mold, bacteria, on and on and on, that gets into our food supply. And if there is not hydrochloric acid, you cannot disinfect the food and the parasite and fungus and yeast and all the unwanted bacteria stays on the food and goes into our body. It gets even worse. In most cases, we find people are producing too little hydrochloric acid. Instead of pH of one, two, or three, the stomach could have pH of four, five, or six. And as a result, you cannot properly break down the protein or food that you eat at this level. And certainly you cannot disinfect the food that you're eating.
Now, because your next door neighbor said to get alkaline water, because you need to alkalize your body, you invest in an alkaline water system, which makes things even worse. Because it is true that you need to alkalize your body, but your stomach needs to be acidic. And when you have alkaline water, the first place it goes, it goes to your stomach. So it, you have low producing uh, hydrochloric acid stomach, and you alkalize it even more, so you make things even worse. So getting back to what I was talking about is don't get alkaline water system. The food that sits in your stomach, it literally starts rotting because there was not enough acid to digest it. So the food stays there. The body doesn't know what to do with it. The food stays there and starts rotting. This rotting food starts to create acid. One of the acids that this rotting food is going to make is lactic acid. The production of this fermentation of lactic acid, it comes in your esophagus and as a result, you get heartburn. As a result, you take antiacids to break down this acid. So when you take antiacid, it reduces this lactic acid and hydrochloric acid that was weak to begin with. That is why once you start antiacids, you will need them for rest of your life. And that's not good. And the dose gets stronger and stronger and stronger as time goes on. It gets worse. As you're on antiacids for a while, you will notice that you don't have energy. Sounds familiar? You're fatigued all the time. You're dependent to coffee. You lose muscle mass and you develop weakness and osteoporosis. This is because what you eat, even healthy food that you eat, it does not even get digested. Let me explain something to you. The stomach has cells to produce acid. It also has cells to create mucus which protects the stomach lining from high amount of acid that is constantly being generated. So we have acid producing cells and mucus producing cells and other enzymes to protect the stomach and make sure the stomach does its job. But if these cells are destroyed with antiacids, with fried food, with bad diet, with low stomach acid and the bad diet that you're having, the stomach becomes lazy and the food stays there and produces the lactic acid that comes up in your esophagus and you feel the burning sensation. Then usually your next door neighbor or your friend or your doctor will tell you to take antacids. Well, they're partially correct. You need to take antacids because you cannot live like this. But you have to understand. These antacids are proton pump inhibitors or acid blockers. And you feel better because you're calming down some of the acid process in your stomach. But what this is also doing is stopping and shutting down the production of acid that needs to be there in your stomach. So now you cannot digest the food, you cannot disinfect the food. And that creates a problem with chronic gut dysfunction, with chronic constipation, chronic bloatingness, being gassy all the time, having heartburn. You need digestive enzymes in your stomach to start digest and break down the food that goes from your stomach into your intestine. I have had numerous cases of patients, they come in and they say, I'm a mess, I have constipation, I have chronic bloatingness, I have heartburn, I cannot live like this, I'm living on Nexium and other proton pump inhibitors. I'm taking, anti, uh, uh, I'm taking probiotics. I changed three different probiotics and I'm still a mess. Well, this patient, I gave him digestive enzymes, a good source. Digestive enzymes to break down the food in the stomach and from the stomach that goes into your intestine to have the probiotics work on it. Many people don't know this. Probiotics does not work in your stomach. It's mainly for your small intestine and large intestine. 
if you have food in your stomach that doesn't get digested and the food gets forced into your small intestine, probiotics could have your symptoms even become more worse. Become more, you become more gassy. You have more constipation. So you need a doctor to understand this whole concept of functional medicine. A vast majority of people create too little hydrochloric acid. Why? Because the production of acid takes a lot of energy. It needs a, it's energy dependent. When you have constant pain, when you have constant body dysfunction, it reduces your energy and causes fatigue. Sounds familiar? So basically you're going through this vicious cycle of having no energy, having low HCL, you have less energy the next day, you have less HCL, and you're becoming chronically worse. And you have to be medicated for the rest of your life because nobody is fixing your body. They want to fix your symptom. They want to fix your stomach. They want to fix your large intestine. They want to fix your thyroid. The body does not work like this. The body does not work with systems of the body or organs. You need to fix the body, many of these symptoms may go away. Can we guarantee it? Absolutely not. Are we successful? Yes, our panel of medical physicians, our panel of other doctors are very successful with helping patients to get better. We have found with our in-house diagnostic testings many musculoskeletal pain, many neurological conditions, many thyroid or diabetes problems, they have a direct gut-related cause. Many restless legs uh, patients suffer, they have yeast and parasite infections that they don't even know about. We test these people, we find them and we help them. Most people in our country, they're stressed. There are actually lab testings and brain evaluation, brain wave evaluations called QEEG testing that shows the average person is chronically stressed. Now when you're stressed, the brain literally shuts down digestion. When it shuts down the digestion, the production of hydrochloric acid diminishes. Then the production of the hydrochloric acid diminishes, then you cannot digest the food, then you cannot disinfect your food. Healthy or unhealthy food. Many patients, they come to our office, they have been to many doctors, they have been taking multiple pills, they are getting worse by the day, by the week, by the month, they're taking more medications, they start to exercise, they cannot lose the weight, they have been taking these special shakes to lose the weight, they try to eat healthy and they are still a mess. This is solely because the people who advise these people, patients, they want to fix their symptom. They want to fix their organ of the body. The body does not work that way. You have to fix the whole entire body all at the same time. You cannot have good thyroid with bad gut. You cannot have great functioning gut function with bad thyroid. The body works together. So even if you eat healthy and you feel miserable, there is reason behind it. And some of these poor people, because they go to multiple doctors, they don't get anywhere because the thyroid doctor looks at their thyroid, the gut doctor looks at their gut, this doctor doesn't care about this doctor, this doctor doesn't care about this doctor, the patient's lab tests show it's normal because the lab tests are, they have a very broad range, we have talked about this before. Us as functional doctors, we look at more narrower ranges. They see the lab test is normal, they feel miserable, then they go to a shrink. They go to a psychiatrist and get colonozapam, hardcore medication, to be able to sleep, Xanax. This is very common with chronic pain sufferers, chronic functional problems, causes psychiatric issues, they go to doctors and they take hardcore medication for something that's not even psychiatric. Fix your gut. So 
when getting back to what we were talking about when the stomach has low acid it is not good and it will allow different types of infections fungal infections parasitic infection bacterial infection and all kinds of other problems so gut health is extremely important gut health is incredibly important one of the first things that you need to do through us or through your own doctor or through your somebody that you know fix your gut so a person has to do diagnostic testing to find what is the underlying cause of your gut dysfunction so they have to order the right tests they have to be able to read the test properly that person should not see normal versus abnormal they have to have a knowledge about how the test is being done they have to based on the result order the proper supplements for you and prescribe it and recommend it for you to take the proper dosage and be able to monitor you if you find somebody like this go to them if you don't find somebody like this come to us i hope this was helpful and if you have any questions don't hesitate to call us at 201-848-8000 or visit us at getfixedtoday.com we do accept most insurance plans and god bless your bad gut can cause your thyroid condition that many of you are suffering from. Some of you know about it, some of you don't know about it. Everybody knows about TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. My doctor says my TSH is too high. My doctor says my TSH is too low. What you and your doctor may not know because he or she does not practice functional medicine is that in order for TSH to be released, you need adequate amount of two very important neurotransmitters serotonin and dopamine the reason i say that guess what where these are made it is made in the gut so bad gut can cause bad thyroid function that is why we need to treat your symptoms all at the same time metabolically and neurologically our medical physicians they order lab testings for you to find the underlying hidden cause there is no guarantee for cure there is no promise for cure my name is peter i came to dr maz uh, to explore his treatment and uh, the time I've been on it, it's been very good for me. It's helped me quite a bit. Uh, I've cut my thyroid medication in half. It's improved my vitamin D. I've had low vitamin D for about a year. And this is the only thing that has seemed to improve it. And uh, I hope that it gets better as I go along. And uh, I'm very well pleased with the treatment. That is why if you come to our office with symptoms of thyroid condition, we also inquire and assess your gut function as well. That is why when people go to the thyroid doctor, the thyroid doctor must check their gut. And a lot of times our experience shows it is not happening with the patients that come to our office. Otherwise, the patient would be on medication for rest of their life. This is most often not done with thyroid doctors to check the patient's gut. In addition, most doctors look at T4, that is the main thyroid hormone, when in actually T3 is the active hormone that they need to check. And most doctors don't even check it. So you may have normal amount of T4, but your body does not convert T4 to T3, which is the active thyroid hormone. And lab testings will show you have a normal amount of T4 and drive yourself crazy, drive your doctor crazy, just because of inadequate lab testing that was ordered by many physicians. Don't get me wrong. This is not about physicians. This is about you. We have a lot of respect for many physicians. Without them, a lot of people would die. But this is generally speaking. It is very important to know most of your thyroid activity occurs away 
from your thyroid gland. You have to have everything else in your body working properly for your thyroid to work properly. If you have been taking cholesterol medication, statin drugs for a while, there is a good chance it is affecting your thyroid and liver function because cholesterol is necessary for all hormone production of your entire body. If you take cholesterol medication to lower your cholesterol, it's going to mess up your whole hormonal system. In our videos, we have discussed thoroughly what is an autoimmune condition. Autoimmune condition is a condition that our body gets affected with stressors, chemical toxins, parasites, viruses, on and on and on, and cannot fight it. So as a result, this stressor attacks your organs or your systems or your tissues of your body, such as your thyroid gland, your gut, and very often your brain, and causes functional symptoms. You cannot medicate yourself to cure an autoimmune condition. There is why most chronic patient sufferers, they are taking medication for the rest of their lives. Hi, my name is Teresa Scotaro. Um, I came to Medwell about, I'm going to say about four weeks ago. When I came here, I was like wiped out. I was done. Um, I asked Dr. Maz, you know, to help me. Um, I've been to naturopath doctors, other doctors. Anyway, long story short, um, he gave me the program and I was, you know, talking about my husband. I even had to argue with my husband, you know, being because I had to go through all the other uh, expenses. But anyway, I'm so glad that I, you know, I, have, I got all my answers. Um, he's very thorough. He's a, a great person. He's very passionate in what he does. And I'm so, so glad that I did his program. I, I just want to say thank you, Dr. Maz. The reason I brought up autoimmune condition in this video is because most chronic patient sufferers have an autoimmune condition and do not know about it. You need to understand anything that causes immune battle in your gut will trigger inflammation. Anything that causes immune battle in your gut, it causes inflammation. When you have inflammation, when you have attacks in your gut, it could be food sensitivities, it could be food intolerances. The only way to know if you have food sensitivity or food intolerance is to get tested. It's not by how you feel. The only way that you find if you have gluten sensitivity is to get tested proper testing. It's not if you have pasta, you feel good. Chronic hidden infections is an attack. Bacterial infection, parasites, mold, yeast, fung uh, fungus that cause unstable blood sugar, stresses adrenal glands. If you have autoimmunity, which most of you most likely do, that you're listening to this video, uh, experiencing chronic conditions, you cannot let your blood glucose to spike up or down sharply. When your blood glucose is low from missing meals or eating meals that are low in production of fiber or protein, your body raises blood glucose by increasing production of inflammatory called IL-6. Now, I don't want to be technical over here. You need to get tested for these as applicable because inflammation, thyroid problem, diabetes, gut problems affect every cell in your body. Let me repeat, you need to get tested for these possible attacks and autoimmune conditions thoroughly, functionally. MRI doesn't show a functional problem. Inflammation, thyroid problem, diabetes, gut problem affect every cell in your body. Based on lab findings and detailed functional assessment, therapies and nutritional products are dispensed to support and help you. 
the supplements that are designed to help your thyroid gland, the supplements that are designed to help your liver function, gut function, liver detoxification, very, very important. Sugar regulation, very important. Functional balancing and hormonal balancing for men and women. What is the medical model for treating autoimmune condition? Prednisone, corticosteroids, they have a lot of side effects which are a lot worse than the symptoms that they're helping. What is the medical model for treating autoimmune condition? Surgery, removing thyroid, removing gallbladder, removing affected part of your colon because it is too late. Well, they have to be removed. So what they're doing is good. Medical model works fantastic when you let your body go and you have a sickness system over here, not healthcare system. If your gallbladder is destroyed, it has to be removed. My whole talk is to make sure your gallbladder does not get destroyed. Don't get me wrong. Many times you may need the medical model on drugs. But many times you don't need the medical model on drugs. Many times you need the medical model on supplements to address the cause of your overall health and make your functions of your body and your organs to work properly because there is no cure for many chronic conditions. So you have a choice to be on medication for the rest of your life, choice to take care of it naturally if you can, choice to do both. Many of our patients, by the time we are done with them, they go to their primary care physician who gave them the medication and the dosage goes lower and lower and lower and lower because their body functions better, better and better and better. We need to perform non-invasive, comprehensive testing, which I have talked in detail in other videos, to identify food sensitivities, food intolerances, gluten, dairy, soy, protein, corn, identify gut infection that is commonly not showing in blood test. We need to identify if you have an unstable blood sugar and tell you what to do. We need to identify if you have stressed adrenal glands and tell you what to do. We need to identify hormonal imbalance. Any of the above may cause the symptoms that you're experiencing now. What we need to do is based on lab findings and comprehensive gut function testing that we do in-house in the office to support and healing your gut function, to support and heal your thyroid function, adrenal function, liver and biliary gallbladder function, and very important, sugar regulation. Listen and listen to me carefully. You need to understand, 80% of your immune system comes from where? You learned that in elementary or middle school. 80% of your immune system comes from your gut. And almost 100% of the time, it's directly contributing to your chronic autoimmune inflammatory symptoms that you're experiencing. You may eat healthy, but if what you eat, even though it's healthy, if you have food intolerance towards it, it's not going to do anything good for you. What good does it do if you eat healthy but it doesn't even get digested in your gut because you have a leaky gut and you have full of inflammation in your gut and gut linings? It will not help you. So we need to eliminate inflammation and bad bacteria from your gut. Ask yourself this. If you feel fatigue after having a meal, most likely you're experiencing hypoglycemia. If you have hypoglycemia, you should not skip breakfast. You should eat a high protein or fiber breakfast. You should eat every two to three hours to keep your sugar level balanced. Snack between the meals. Avoid fasting 12 hours after dinner and before breakfast. If you have insulin resistance, you should avoid eating sugars. Limit food quantity. Don't eat too much for lunch or dinner if you have insulin resistant. Because 
if you have insulin resistance and you don't follow what I'm telling you, there's a good chance that you become diabetic later on and you don't want to get there. It's very hard to reverse it. So you should avoid eating table sugars, white sugar, it's horrible, soda, no good. Limit food quantity. Limit starchy food to avoid fatigue after a meal. Increase physical activity. So our goal is to make you feel better as quickly as possible. Sometimes it happens during your first visit before you leave during the first visit. I want you to understand, we are not the only one that's helping you. You and Medwell team, you and Medwell medical doctors, you and Medwell therapist, we work together to learn about you and all of us help you. So if this information was educational and you feel it makes sense to you, give us a call. If it doesn't make sense to you, don't give me a call. Don't call Medwell and ask to talk to one of the doctors. If you want to change your life, there is a very good chance that you're going to feel better. Give us a call 201-848-8000 or go to the website fixmeup123.com. God bless.